Hello, I'm Tracy Small, School Counseling Director. And I'm Melanie Kessler, Director of College and Career Readiness. The following video is our first annual course planning night for eighth grade families. The goal of the evening was to provide information to families about Somerville High School's courses, graduation requirements, and course selection process. You'll hear from us as well as some of the school counseling staff, starting with Mr. LeBurge, Counselor for Beacon House. Important for students to challenge themselves, although that looks different for everybody. So some of you may have a student that challenges themselves too much, and as a parent or a guardian, it's your job to reel that person in, reel your student in, and um, try to get them to balance their self a little bit and not take on too much academically. Um, students are going to do better if they're studying courses that they're interested in. Now realistically, not uh, every course they take in high school they're likely going to be interested in. There are a lot of graduation requirements where they have to take courses. In addition to that, there are lots of elective options at the high school where ho hopefully students will be enrolled in those classes, enjoying what they study, and uh, that will increase their investment here at the high school. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about high school transcript. Now, transcript is kind of a new word. As an elementary and middle school student, you don't really have a transcript. The transcript is a document that is going to follow you after high school. On the transcript, every course that you've taken, grades 9 through 12, will be listed with every grade that you've gotten. First, through first, second, third, and fourth quarter, along with the final grade. Um, there's an overall GPA and class rank on that transcript. Um, when you apply for jobs, when you apply for colleges, you'll be sending your transcript as proof of graduation from high school and proof of how well you did in high school, too. So um, we tell freshmen all the time, your, high, your transcript starts from day one freshman year. So you can't just all of a sudden decide to do well in 11th and 12th grade. It's important to get off to a good start. Something else that's due in addition to the transcript is uh, credits. So everything we do at the high school uh, relates to credits. So a student needs 105 credits to graduate. Uh, a student will take 35 credits per year. That's a full schedule. In the year-long academic classes, English, Math, Science, Social Studies, World Language, they are five credits. The half-year courses, the semester-long classes, are two five credits. The minimum passing grade Somerville High School is a 60% and D minus. That will get you the credits for that course. Uh, if you were to get a 59%, that would be an F and you would fail the course. So of course we're not aiming for that, but it's good to understand. Um, in order to get promoted, to be a sophomore, you have to have a minimum of 25 credits. A junior would have a minimum of 50. To be a senior, 70. And again, 105 to graduate with at least 20 during the senior year. So if your student is passing every course, uh, they should have 140 credits. So that 105 is uh, you know, really a minimal expectation for what our students are expected here. So our high school graduation requirements have been changing over the last couple of years, which is good. We're challenging our students more. We're aligning ourselves with the Mass Core. We're aligning ourselves more with the expectations of uh, Massachusetts colleges. And um, so we've made some great changes. If you look up here, four years of English, that's 20 credits. All students must pass that in order to graduate. Four years of math, so that's one of the changes. Uh, it used to be three years. Uh, now it's four years of math, again, aligning with Common Core, Mass Core. Um, students have to get up to Algebra 2. Typically our students take Algebra 2 and go on to additional math classes like pre-calculus, statistics, advanced math. Uh, for vocational students, there are some exceptions here. Um, Vocational students can do three years of math and have that fourth year of math be embedded within their vocational program. Science is three years, 15 credits. History, three years, 15 credits. Our progression for history is U.S. History 1, freshman year, then U.S. History 2, sophomore year, World History junior year. Uh, world language, so two years of the same world language. So if a student does French 1 and then Spanish 1, that would not meet the requirement. They would have to take French 1 then French 2. Uh, typically, students uh, have room in their schedule to take above that. Um, sometimes you can get to the third or fourth level in the world language, and we do offer some AP classes in world languages here at the high school. There is an exception for this world language requirement for vocational students. Um, two gym classes and two health, so those classes are 2.5 credits each. So 2.5 credit gym, um, two times, and then the same with health one and health two. And then also a fine arts credit, which recently increased with uh, the freshman class of 2020. So it's now five credits, where it used to be 
Fine arts could be a music, an art, drama, any of the visual arts meet that requirement. Okay, so how do I know what to take? Uh, your counselors at the uh, elementary schools are going to help you with this process, and the uh, program of studies also has this outline. Here's what a typical freshman schedule looks like. So English 1. Now, also consider that there are multiple levels. So there's college prep, there's honors, and then there's college prep with support for the majority of these classes. So freshmen take English 1, U.S. History 1. They'll take a math class, which is typically Algebra 1 or Geometry. There are some exceptions where students um, have taken Algebra 2 as uh, freshmen. All students will take Biology. Uh, again, honors, college prep or college prep with support, and also be taking the Biology MCAS at the end of freshman year. And then Health 1. Again, we try to have our freshmen take the Health 1 uh, requirement right off the bat because there's some information that's uh, really important for ninth grade students to get. Now, there are room for elective classes freshman year. So strongly recommended, but not necessarily required. You can do two years of world language, sophomore and junior year, junior and senior year. If you can get started ninth grade, that'd be great. And our offerings are up here, Spanish, French, Italian, and Portuguese. Some other options, uh, we have some fantastic music programs here, whether it's orchestra, chorus, or band. And then a bunch of music electives. We have our uh, exploratory CTE program, which you'll hear more about. It's our career technical education. Lots of art classes. If you look through the program of studies, you'll see the electives that we offer for the course description. And it'll also say whether freshmen qualify to enter that class. Okay, so I'm gonna pass it to Mrs. Kessler. Thank you. Hi, um, I was out manning the door before. So I don't know if Ms. Mall explained who I was, um, but um, my name is Ms. Kessler, um, and my role here is college and career readiness. Um, and I know Tracy mentioned, Ms. Small mentioned, that kind of the planning process for after high school really starts now, um, just in starting to think about what you want to do, what your interests are. Um, so that's why um, I'm here, to, so that you understand that that's, um, this process starts now. So one important piece of this, as Justin just mentioned, is checking the program of studies. So students are gonna get their program of studies from their counselors at their schools, um, and there is so much information in there. Um, so we just wanted to give you kind of a primer on how to read that and what's in there, because it's gonna be really important. There is also a link to the program of studies on the um, school counseling website um, for the high school. So if you lose it, if you're not sure where it goes, if you need another to a copy, um, there is a link to the whole thing online. Um, so there's a ton of information in there. there are, so if you don't remember what um, Mr. Laverge just said about all those graduation requirements, everything is listed in there. And you know, if you're a CTE student, if you're not a CTE student, how many years of this, how many years of that, um, all of that information is listed there. There's also something called Mass Core. Uh, some of you may have heard of that, but that's kind of the recommended what Massachusetts recommends every high school student has completed. Um, all of those requirements are in there, just so you can have an idea. Um, there is information about our ninth grade experience program, which I won't go into in too much detail, but it's a really wonderful program here to help all of our ninth graders feel connected and do, um, do well while they're here. Um, information about all your courses, um, GPA, course level, all that kind of stuff. Probably the most important piece is the description of all of the courses that you could possibly take. So this is what a course description will look like. Every department in the program of studies has their own section. So all of the math, courses will be listed together, um, together. All the art courses will be listed together. And they'll all have some sort of similar description like this, okay? You'll see the course title up top, and then you'll see the course level. So if it says H, that means it's an honors course. If it says AP, it is an advanced placement course. Um, so there are all different course levels you can possibly take. If it says CP, it's a college prep course. The description for what those courses are, and, uh, what those levels are, and what you can expect from those levels, all listed in the program of studies, okay? So what's the difference between like a CP level and an honors level? There's a description in there, so you can sit down and figure out if that's right for you, which level is gonna be best for you. Um, there's a, a line underneath that that says prerequisites. 
That's really important. Those are the required courses that you need to take before you can take this class, okay? So sometimes there aren't any prerequisites. But, um, for example, you can't take statistics, which is this course, until you've at least completed Algebra 2, because you're going to need those skills in order to take this class. So sometimes you need to just check and make sure that there's you've done those courses before you can do this next course. They have the grades that are eligible to take this. So for you all, you want to make sure that ninth graders are eligible to take a course. If you're ever unsure, you can always ask your counselor, um, but it should be listed right there, what grades to take in. And then there's a description. And then on the right side, it tells you how many credits it's worth. Justin um, was just going over, Mr. LaBerge was just going over um, how many credits you need in each um, subject, how many credits you need each year, um, and how the credit system works. So the, each description will tell you how many credits each course is worth. If it's a full year course, it'll be worth five, and if it's um, a semester course, it's 2.5. So you'll be able to get all of that information in your program studies. That's a very, very important um, booklet that you'll get, so um, we just want to refer you back to that when you have questions, because um, there's a ton of information in there. Um, so some other thing we just want you to consider, again, we're starting to plan, starting to kind of think about what's happening after high school, which I know seems like it's a million years away, um, but starting to have an idea of, of what you're looking towards, right? Because you want to plan early. Um, and things might change, your mind might change, and that's okay. But starting to think about having an idea. The Massachusetts State College, this is what they ask that students have completed. So this includes um, you know, the UMass system, Framingham State, Salem State, all the, the public state college system. This is what they um, want students to have completed by the time they finish high school. So you'll notice that our graduation requirements are very similar because we want our students to be prepared. Um, for private colleges, their requirements might vary, um, but they're gonna look similar. Sometimes they're, um, they want a little bit more, they might want an extra year of a language or um, something like that, but, um, but this is just to give you an idea. If you're, we want you to plan ahead and kind of aim for this, and if your plans change online, you can always readjust, but, um, which is why we recommend you start with that world language as soon as possible. Um, so just to, to give you an idea, the four courses of English, four courses of math, Three courses of science with lab work. All of our science classes are lab science classes, so they would all qualify for that. Um, two history courses, two world language courses, and two electives. So this is what I was just saying. We, we want you to plan ahead. You know, we, you don't, may not know yet exactly what your course, your plan is after high school, but um, we'd rather have you be over prepared, um, and then maybe not need that extra year of a world language, than then get to your junior or senior year and realize you don't have time to fit in all the requirements that you need um, for whatever your post-secondary goals are. We're, we're trying to give you all this information about how you're going to make these decisions. A really important piece of this is the conversations that students are going to have with their teachers and their counselors. Their current teachers are going to talk with them about, um, you know, what what they can expect in a geometry course or an algebra course, um, so that they can really feel prepared to make a good decision. That decision is the students and the families. We want want you to feel empowered to make that decision with the guidance of your teachers and your counselors at school. Um, so they're going to be having these conversations with students and um, and with families about what um, how, how the students can best make those decisions. Um, Course levels, like a little bit earlier, we do have um, several course levels at the high school. Um, so there are college prep courses, um, there are college prep with support classes um, for students who, who might need a little bit more support, um, might provide a little bit extra um, kind of scaffolding or um, for students. There are honors classes for students who, who feel like they're doing well on a course and they really want to challenge themselves, they're ready to move at a little bit of a faster pace, maybe be a little more independent with, with their work. Um, and then eventually down the line, students um, may be able to take advanced placement courses. Um, advanced placement courses are actually college level courses offered here at the high school. Um, and so students get a sense of what that is like. They're pretty rigorous, they're pretty fast paced. Um, and we, we do encourage students, if you're feeling ready to challenge yourself, to take that on. At the end of those courses, you can take a, an exam. And if you do well enough on that exam, you could get college credit um, when, you, when you go off to college. So that's a possibility. But even if you don't get that college credit, the point is really that you get that experience of what college level <coughs> courses feel like. So I am going to pass it over to Meg Groskopf, who is our ninth grade CTE counselor. She may be the counselor for, for many of you if any of your students choose um, to try out CTE, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about that program. Good evening. All right, so CTE is definitely a word that our 
couple few letters that is boring to a lot of people. It stands for Career and Technical Education. Uh, it's been referred to for a long time as VOC uh, or Vocational Education. It is not anything like uh, the vocational education of the 70s or 80s. Uh, career and tech education has come a long way since then, and Somerville High is one of the few places that offer a fully comprehensive curriculum. Uh, that means that it's full academic course load as well as full programming uh, through career and tech ed. So all students who are in CT are still required and expected to hold a full academic course load. Uh, I know that Silver has talked a lot about requirements and that some requirements may be ways for students in career and tech ed, uh, but as Professor will talk about in a little bit, that all requirements for mass support do fit in uh, into a schedule for a student that's interested in the career and tech ed program. Uh, so, Learning more about CTE, there's a couple ways that we do this for a lot of students and parents. This is very new. This is not uh, a math class or an English class where you've been working through that for, you know, K to eight. Uh, and I understand the, next, the expectations of that course. Uh, it's new for a lot of students. So the career and tech ed students, we have ambassadors, juniors and seniors who are proven to be uh, academic leaders as well as leaders in their specific fields come and talk to the students about what each program does, what certifications they can receive, uh, and what are their post-secondary plans, which include union, two-year technical education programs after high school, and then four-year university programs. Uh, we will be doing this on February 13th, 14th, and 16th at all the schools, uh, and they'll be getting applications the resource books, which will have all of the information for every school, including a breakdown of what each student would study in a program, what articulation agreements, so college agreements that we have with each program, where our students uh, go to post-secondary education uh, within every program, and then a recommended course of study for each program as well. Uh, on top of that, for any family members who are interested in learning more about our programs, meeting teachers, coming into the shops uh, and having a kind of a hands-on experience as well as the full tour of the program. On March 25th, uh, from 8 a.m. to noon, we open our doors and welcome everybody in to uh, get a sense of what CTE has uh, and to have more in-depth conversations with all of our teachers and our CTE director, Leo Simone. <laughs> So exploratory in ninth grade looks a little different. It's one class, so it's considered an elective. Uh, and in ninth grade, students who chose to look into the career and tech ed program would enter exploratory. And exploratory is a time for each student to understand and get some hands-on real life applicable skills in each program. So they would shop, they would travel through all 13 programs on a 10-day rotation cycle. While they're going through this, we're also doing career and college readiness prep. So they're meeting with me in a pull-out service, uh, and we are going through four-year career and college plans, uh, as well as career interest inventories, uh, and looking into creating uh, post-secondary options for each student as early as ninth grade. So whether they choose to continue with the program or not after 10th grade, that they still have that to carry with them. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether they're interested in a program with us or not, that they're all getting a four-year career plan uh, with their college or uh, post-secondary options at the end of ninth grade. They, the 13 shops that are listed behind are the 13 that uh, we have on campus. They're all Chapter 74, which means that they're all fully accredited. They, each program uh, receives certifications upon graduations that can be used either for college credit or uh, directly into the workforce or post-secondary education, depending on what uh, serves that student's needs and their goals. Um, I'm going to do this without looking at the board. It's probably going to be out of order, but I have to do it by floors. We have uh, pre-engineering drafting, uh, automotive technology, residential technical carpentry, uh, manufacturer, excuse me, um, advanced manufacturing. Uh, that includes uh, the new open this year fab lab uh, offered at the high school. Uh, metal technology and welding, uh, cosmetology, culinary uh, arts, including hospitality services, dental assisting, 
early education, childhood, uh, ISSN or computer support networking services, electrical techno electrical electrical technologies, uh, visual graphics communication and printing, uh, and health careers. I think I got them all. Uh, so those are all the students. Those are all of the programs that the students would explore that freshman year, and then we would go through and find the best fit for each student based on their needs. Um, whether they chose to enter or not, uh, we would then discuss at the end of 10th grade. But it's looked at as an elective for them to kind of explore more about their options for the summer building. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Small. So I'm going to talk about the program, of, um, excuse me, the course selection card. Uh, so just so you know, you will all be receiving the program of studies that looks like this. So look in backpacks, ask for this. At some point, your schools will be distributing those. And the course selection cards look like this, front and back. So this essentially, this paragraph is on the back of this course selection card, and it just talks about our philosophy around course selection um, and how it's a, it's a comprehensive approach with lots of people kind of weighing in about the best way for students to choose courses. So those are the instructions on the back of the card. And here's a graphic of the card. So you'll see there are various columns. Over on the left are all of the different subject areas. And then we have columns primary request course, which is the course that you're actually requesting. And then we have the course number. And the course number is actually found in the program of study. So you want to make sure you're choosing the right course number for the right course. Um, and all of that, that's clearly outlined in the program of studies. You want to total your credits. 35 credits per year. And then I'll talk a little bit about alternates in the next slide, but you're definitely going to want to, especially for, I'll talk about it now, especially for elective courses, things that you may um, not get scheduled in because of a course conflict or things like that, the more alternates that you can give our high school counselors in terms of, because um, they'll, what will happen is we'll get the cards, the master schedule will be created, schedules will be created and then our counselors will look at those over the summer and look at requests and try to fit those requests in. If those requests don't fit, they'll have an alternate to choose from. And um, if we don't have alternates, it's harder to make a, a really good schedule. So this is um, it, this information is also on the back of the card, all of these important notes. So that's what I just mentioned about the alternate course, um, that there's a CTE, with the CTE program and application is required and then just the specifics about how to complete the course and different programs and where to put those. And this is an example of one that might look, you know, when it was complete. The big thing is this parent guardian signature at the bottom of the card. It's really, really important that you review those course selections and that you sign off on that card. And we're going to be doing a very similar process throughout the four years that students are here. Hopefully we won't change the card too much. It might be a different color. There might be some different things. So we just wanted to show an example. Um, a lot of times students will start to feel like um, there's lots of kind of requirements that they need to do and how am I going to fit in, you know, if I want to do a CTE shop and I, and I want to fit in my world language and I want to, but I really like art too and how do I, how do, I do all of that? And so um, we just wanted to show you some examples. This might not look like there are a thousand different versions of what someone's four year courses, uh, or their courses over four years could look like, but we wanted to show you some examples to show you that it is possible to fit everything in. Um, it requires passing all of your classes on the first try, so that's important. Um, but it is it is possible to, to really fit in what you want to do, um, what you're excited about um, in, in lots of different ways. Doing CTE does not mean that you can't do an AP course um, and, and vice versa, and, and so, so we want to make sure you can do that. So. We have a few examples you may, not, may or may not be able to see. Um, but this first student, we have, like uh, Mr. LaBerge talked about, we have some phenomenal art options here, um, art courses that students can take, really exciting ones, and they really enjoy being there. They're very popular. Um, and so if a student has a really strong interest in art, we want them to be able to take all those courses. We don't want someone to feel like, well, I have to take, you know, I, I want to take my AP courses, and but I, and then I can't fit in all these, these other exciting things I want to do. It is possible. In fact, the student fit in multiple art courses every year and still took you know, the four years of English, the four years of math, the four years of social studies, which is one more than they have to, um, you know, multiple years of science, like four years of science, four years of a language, which again is two more than you have to. Um, and so 
I don't want you to get too tied up in exactly what's up there, but we just want to show you that it is possible to do what you need to do and even go above and beyond and, and still fit in what, you, what you're really excited about. Um, this is an example of a student who um, is really, really wanted to take a lot of science courses. Notice um, that they've taken, they did they take biology, chemistry, and physics, but they also took two different AP science courses. They took an extra, I think, what, anatomy and physiology course. You know, this is a student who, who's really into science, and they can fit all of that in with also still fitting in all the requirements. And the final one is really important. Um, Meg and I worked together on this to make sure that we could show you that um, if you are a CTE student, it is still very, very possible um, to fit in all of the requirements that you need to go to a four-year school, um, to take high-level courses. Um, as Meg said, this is not the vocational of the past. It's changed a lot, and it's really important that, that students feel like they have any option that they want, whether they're in CTE or not, after high school. Um, so we just wanted to show you that example of a student who did read, you know, took four years of math, getting to a high level of math, took four years of English, getting to an AP English course, um, fit in all of their science courses, took a couple art courses even, um, and, and got it all in there. So we just kind of wanted to show you that to reassure you that everything can fit, um, even though it feels like right now, as an eighth grader, how you know, looking at the next four years can be overwhelming. So um, if you want to try that exercise, it's actually really um, helpful to sit down and plan out, like, well, what might I want to take over four years? It's definitely going to change, but it's helpful to kind of plan it out and just see, you know, play with how can things fit. Um, so that can be helpful. 